Welcome to Tutorial Tuesday, where today I'm gonna to be showing you how to get those nice moody greens. So we're gonna go from this to this. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Well, not literally jump, like, let's just go ahead and turn around and start editing. So I'll see you here in a sec. Okay, so the look that we wanna go for is kind of like a dark, moody setting. So the first thing about this image that I know is that we have to go ahead and darken it up. So the easiest way to go ahead and do that off the get-go is just to go ahead and bring down the exposure some. I think that's pretty good right there. Now, before I go ahead and get into the other sections like the shadows, the whites, and the highlights, I personally like to go ahead and really get started with the tone curve. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create two points. I'm gonna go ahead and create one here in the middle which is going to be your midtones. Second point is I'm going to go ahead and do it in this quadrant right here which is going to end up being your shadows. Now what I want to go ahead and do to give this image a little bit of more contrast is I want to go ahead and actually grab this point right here at the shadows and bring that down. You'll notice that it's starting to change the image dramatically. Now for myself I like to go ahead and keep my images pretty much realistic in a way. So what I'm going to do is either I'm going to go ahead and leave it where it's exactly at or I'm going to go ahead and just slightly bring it down. Also what you end up seeing in a lot of moody photos is that people end up crushing the black. So this right here is your blacks and people like to go ahead and bring that up to give it like a faded look, but I like my blacks. So I'm, if anything, I'm gonna bump it up just ever so slightly. And now that I'm done with the tone curve, I'm gonna come all the way back up and now I'm gonna go ahead and start messing with the rest of the basic panel. I definitely wanna go ahead and bring down the blacks a little bit more. Now what I want to really pop in this image, of course, is gonna be the center. That's our main focus in the photograph. So what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and bring out some of those details. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the whites. And I know it's gonna also bring out this top section, but we're gonna fix that in a little bit. I think for the shadows, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it as is. I am gonna go ahead and reduce those some of the highlights and that's already looking pretty good. So now what I'm gonna do, and this is where we're gonna see a huge change, is we're gonna go ahead and come all the way down over to the HSL panel. Now this is where it starts to get really fun because you can do so much color manipulation. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the green first and you'll notice that I can go ahead and adjust the hue, the saturation and the luminance. Now if I go ahead and mess with the hue to the far left, you'll notice that it begins to change color. I go to the far right, that's got like this super greenish tone, but but you can tell from this, it just does not look realistic whatsoever. What I'm gonna do though, is I do wanna go ahead and bump that over to the right slightly though, because I do like the changes that it's making. So I think probably about 18 looks pretty good. Now the saturation. I do wanna go ahead and slightly bring that down a little bit to give it kind of more of like that moody-ish look. And I'm gonna go ahead and leave the luminance as is. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go over to the yellow because there is some yellow going on in this photograph right here. So I can do the same thing and mess with the hue. And notice the changes there. It's mainly in this upper area. I'm gonna go ahead and actually change that a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and also desaturate it. Now the reason why I went ahead and decided to desaturate that yellow is because I don't want it to compete with the main subject of the photograph. So there's just a few more things that we're gonna go ahead and do that's gonna really make this image pop. So we're gonna go ahead and go to the masking panel. We're gonna go ahead and do a radial gradient. And I'm gonna go ahead and just make a gradient right here in the dead center where our main subject is. And what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and bump up those whites just to kind of make that area pop a little bit more. Bring down the highlights a little bit as well. Okay, so there is our first radial gradient. I'm gonna go ahead and create a separate mask so that way it's in a separate layer as well. So here's our second gradient. I'm gonna also go ahead and do this in the center, just like how we did originally. Now, why am I doing that? I'm doing it for a specific reason. And I'm doing that because I can invert this over. I'm gonna go to adjust the feather. I don't want it to be super smooth this time, somewhere like around there, maybe make it a little bit bigger. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and bring down the exposure. That way it makes everything on that outside, the red part, dark to bring more attention to the center of the photograph. So let's go ahead and bring down the exposure Oh yeah, there we go. Now that's looking solid. So with a few simple steps, we've now gone from this to this. If you did learn something today as well, make sure to go ahead and leave a like, make sure to go ahead and subscribe to the channel for more content. And as always, stay creative, my friend.